Yeah, it's new from Ping, and I think uh, to be fair to Ping, when they release a product, it's uh, it certainly appeals to the masses. They do very well in terms of uh, the game improvement audience, and uh, the G700 did very well, and this is the G710, and it's going to be interesting. There's a big change in terms of how it looks, and I think... We'll probably start there because that's what initially happened. It caught my eye. I opened a box and uh, was met with this thing. And I've got to say, they've done a real good job here. First of all, I love, for whatever reason, a golf club, a set of irons with this black finish. But they've done it extremely well. It's very much minimal in its uh, in its markings, I suppose. There's a nice milling across the back end. There's some nice shaping around the club. And again, that top line you can see just chamfered off again, which... Like I said, it creates a real good shape on this club. And uh, if looks are anything in terms of shelf appeal, this is going to grab a lot of attention, I reckon, for average golfers and certainly for ping enthusiasts. But it's all about what they're packing inside of it and uh, a few images and explanations in terms of technology. So ping is saying longer and more forgiving. And uh, they're also saying that it's going to create a uh, metal wood-like feeling. So that's interesting. As with all game improvement irons, the same claims, faster ball speeds, added distance, higher launching, and with stopping power. That's a pretty decent package. And the only other number that I feel is really interesting is 5% higher MOI. Anybody, any average golfer will like the idea of some more forgiveness. And it's that uh, Hydro Pearl finish that we've seen. It's a PVD finish for those of you who are interested in terms of how it's going to sort of shape up in terms of wear and tear. Uh, the seven iron that I'm going to be testing is 29 and a half degrees in terms of loft. And there is a power spec option as well. That's all you need to hear in terms of the spec. You've seen enough in terms of visuals. I'm going to take this out on the course. I'll get some dry ball data. And then join me back in here and we'll do an overall evaluation of this Ping G710. But on first thoughts, this looks pretty decent to me. Yeah, time for some reality testing out on the golf course. I'm at Conway Golf Club. And uh, what I've done, I've brought out, I've got the G710s, obviously, but I've also brought the G700. Because I think there's been some significant changes and definitely visual, at least, improvements at this stage from the G700 model. And that's what it supersedes. So we'll have a look in terms of how that plays out with a few shots that I hit around the course. And that's the first comparison we'll put to it now where I put the two clubs together and you'll see yourself from the top line, there's a significant visual difference uh, in the overall, not just the top line itself, but the overall profile of the club I think changes quite a lot. And I think one of the other things they've done that I mentioned earlier in the visuals on the G710 is that different shade of grey, that very light shade of grey in the face, which really does frame the ball quite well, which you didn't, didn't see on the G700. But anyway, started to some golf balls, and uh, as you can see, I hit quite a few. I've got pitching wedge, I've got seven iron, and I've got five iron, and we've used all three of those in different situations. From the tee, in terms of the five iron I used a couple of times, very impressive club, and again, it, what you'd expect, I think, forgiving, feels like it's zipping off there and there's it's different sounding than I think than the lower end of the bag but let's go there first of all the wedge I hit a wedge shot from here which you're looking at now which is pretty impressive and it was nice it was kind of like it was half a wedge it was a controlled wedge and I was able to get plenty of action on the ball we're playing into soft greens we're in the middle of winter but you can just it was nice it was a nice bit of contact ball club and it felt very much as though I was in control of that ball flight so I liked that a lot and then onto the seven iron shots that you're seeing now. And again, very easy ball to pick up. Um, again, it's hard. what is forgiveness exactly? But I got the ball well. I had a check on the club face. It wasn't always out that middle. And it seemed to be doing similar things in terms of its ball flight and overall distance and carry. All very much positive things, what you'd hope to see. A little bit of short game with the wedge. And again, it was a club that I had plenty of confidence with. This kind of thing that we've seen in the past where a lot of balls sort of um, this kind of flyer effect, if you like, that you had, springboard effect that you had off game improvement irons. I think that's one thing that a number of manufacturers have done really well in that the consistency across the club face was definitely there in all models as well. But before I go on to do some overall evaluation, I also want to throw in a little bit of extra footage that I managed to gather. And this is about a putter that's come out from Ping. Just died off at the end. 
Yeah, just a quick mention on these ping putters. It is this Hepler range, and uh, it's a very different looking range, and a wide and broad range in terms of head styles and shapes. So certainly something to suit everybody in terms of the style of club they like to play. But the reason I want to show it you very briefly is I'm out testing this this morning. It's not fair to give it a fair assessment because of, like I said, these uh, greens that we're playing this uh, time of year. And we'll have a closer look later on in the summer. But it's a big bold move in terms of looks. Again, it's a massive change from what I've seen from Ping before. And for me, visually, it looks absolutely stunning. It's also very different than what I've felt in terms of from Ping putters mm. before. Completely smooth across the club face, no kind of groove pattern whatsoever. And uh, real interesting and different feel. But for me, in terms of looks, the G710 and this Hepler Ranger putters is a massive leap forward for Ping. And for my eye, at least, it's a real impressive one. So back to the irons. Um, the one thing I just want to talk about is the sound and feel. Now, in the wedge and the seven iron, to me, they were a great feeling and they sounded like what I'd expect sort of irons to sound like, um, a cast iron to sound like. What I then found with the five iron is, if you remember in the intro and we looked at what Ping were looking to achieve in terms of what the, the design and how the structure was put together, they wanted a kind of like um, fairway wood. I can't remember the description they used, but essentially a fairway wood, a... Uh, a hybrid type of feel and sound. And I certainly noticed that in the five iron. Um, so I don't know why it was quite so different, but it definitely differed in terms of sound. Uh, it definitely come a bit more tingy in the five iron. And for me, that would be a slight negative, only because of what I want to hear from an iron. But in terms of have pinged achieve what they set out to do, yes, they have. And I can see the logic in why they have, because I think that sort of sound perhaps resonates with a little bit of power, a little bit of zip. And I think that can help mentally a lot of golfers achieve what they want. So maybe just take the time a little bit, assuming that club is more like that sort of hybrid. I don't know. I don't know whether it's just a pure mental thing. But they've, they, their aim was to achieve that sound. And I noticed it in the long grinds, not so much in that seven and wedge. The overall assessment is quite an easy one. And I'll throw up some dry ball data now. But the dry ball data is... It doesn't tell us anything in terms of distance. It's where we'd expect it to be. These are strong lofted irons. Again, what we expect to see. The big thing is that the spin number is incredibly good and incredibly consistent. And again, I think it's something that game improvement irons in general have advanced majorly forward over the last 18 months in terms of increasing that spin number. So gaining that control, less variables in terms of that club face. And they've definitely achieved that in this. It's incredibly high spin number from the strength of loft that is in these irons that are tested. So that was incredibly impressive. Their performance overall, like I said, for a game improvement iron, I think it's an incredibly good looking iron. The profile of it compared to G700 is massively different. And for me, from, in terms of shelf appeal, it looks superb. Behind a ball, it looks superb. And in the bag, it looks superb, to be quite honest with you. So overall, for me, if, if, you, if you again, if you're happy with the size of profile, and I'm talking heel to toe profile, if you're looking for that kind of assistance, and if you like in particular that sound and feel, then these are a, a very impressive set of clubs that have come out from Ping. And like I said, for me, a massive leap forward in terms of what they were in terms of G700s. Anyway, as ever, it's a gorgeous morning. It's an early morning down here at Conway Golf Club. I'm all finished in terms of the Ping G710 review, but uh, I think I'll carry on playing a few more holes and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, no doubt I'll be seeing you all soon because there's a lot of clubs flying around at the moment.